Коллеги, привет. Hi, colleagues. Uh, давайте поговорим. Let's talk about rapid growth or explosive growth. Let me say once again. I am CEO and founder of the company. What is growth hacking? Let's uh, say that, first of all, growth hacking is explosive growth, or it's a method using which the company can grow by X fold in a certain time. Talking about our company, in 2020, 2022 to 2021, we grew 28-fold. Clearly, this result was created thanks to the low base. Initially, there was a low base, but 23 to 2022, we grew by 2.8 times, as which if we achieved 2.4 billion. And in 2024 versus 2023, we grew revenue by 100 million rubles. But if we, uh, but the market was dropping by 39, 38.9%. So against this backdrop, this this growth is quite significant. We we're growing on a dropping market. Let's start by saying that growth hacking is about the team to find the like-minded people who want to achieve strong results and great success. When I interview people, I keep on asking Alexei, where is your company moving? Uh, what do you want to achieve? I always say, guys, we are Olympic champions in IT industry. We want to achieve the highest results in IT, um, getting um, some second or third place is not enough for us. If you are as ambitious as us, join us in case if you're not so ambitious, then you'd rather find another employer. So uh, what I started with, I found like-minded people that would grow together with me and perform great and achieve great heights. Talking about the main task of growth hacking, first of all, as it has been said, growth hacking is finding a way to multiply your business a fewfold. It's a uh, um, hypothesis, coming up with hypothesis, maybe the craziest hypothesis. You should test this hypothesis, then testing hypothesis and drawing results, outcomes. The, I will not go into theory too much or into details because you're welcome to read it in books and online. There's a lot of information. Let me just uh, draw your attention to most important things. As a founder and my team, we have gone through these things and I wanted to draw your attention to them first. Um, you should be tolerant to failure while you're testing. The best companies, the most advanced, co advanced companies out of 10 tests, eight are failing. So uh, please use your patience, support your team, and uh, make them expect that uh, there will be failures, but they just need to try and test new features over and over again. And they should try to apply them to the market. Second MVP, testing, which is testing on in the market, but in such a way that you uh, do not, that it doesn't come at a cost. It will be kind of patchwork, so it's a cost, a cheap format just to test whether it flies or not. If it flies, then you can invest and you can produce it and must, and you can move on. And automation as much as possible. If something can be automated, then automate it. Because when you keep on testing hypotheses, in case if you don't automate them, then you will keep on hiring more and more people. That is quite costly, and they will take a lot of resources. Um, but uh, don't get carried away with this. Sometimes it's cheaper to hire a person who will press the button rather than automating uh, a process that and which will take six months. We have made these mistakes. I wanted to draw your attention to this. So outcomes. Of course, we see what are the changes, how KPIs are changing. As I said, in case if KPIs are changing for the better, then we are taking, taking those projects and those pilots that succeed. We prioritize them and we hand them over to backlog to our developers. Now let's talk about uh, practice, what, what we have gone through, what we have tried. First of all, if we um, discuss why we achieved uh, this successful success, we define the strategy right, we define the product right, and we define the audience right. 
we got cl we clearly realized we have no money and we need to uh, rapidly uh, receive payback on our investments. Uh, we don't have a chance to um, acquire users to the platform for a long time. So we realized that we should not go to B2C. Our clients are banks. And we clearly shaped our product as SaaS solution for a bank. It automates agents' networks. I will not go down into details of our product, but I just wanted to emphasize that it's important to determine what kind of product you're, you're making and who's the target audience of your product. We all have heard about um, SWOT analysis, etc., but it's really an important thing that, that really uh, that's really worth it. As a result, we disrupted the market and we created a niche that was a purely blue ocean. We are, we are leading there now. Next, what are the other things that we used in order to grow and in order to achieve the results that we have achieved? We saw the following uh, pain point or headache of our users. Our users, agents that are selling banking products, they uh, fall dormant. I mean, they stop using their online account. They stop making, uh, buying something and making sales for us. So we started thinking, how can we um, make sure we don't miss them? And how um, can we find the right time when the agent is about to um, quit using us. So we started using customer um, behavior deviations, how often uh, he opens the system, what products they're using, how often they get money, so on and so forth. And based on that, based on this analytics, we created, um, we created AI, kind of AI, that helps, um, that reminds automatically, dear user, please stay with us. Here is a new product for you, or uh, your agent's commission is higher from now on, or uh, buy or sell two products and you will get the third product as, as a bonus. So we started trigger communications and uh, we reduced the churn. And as a result, 80% of agents stayed with us instead of churning and they stopped leaving banks, which is quite a high competitive advantage of our product and percentage of active customer base accounts to 45% versus the market, which is 20 to 25%. So our, um, our model is twice as efficient in retention. Also, we started moving um, deeper into clients. We had a hypothesis. Uh, what if we add complementing products for agents. What do I mean? We sell mortgage, uh, the bank has consumer loans on top of that, some credit cards and other products such as um, moving turnkey, moving from one place to another, or choosing um, new development or buying a um, parking lot. And around this anchor product, in this case, our anchor product is mortgage, we started building um, we started building additional products, which creates ecosystem. As a result, profitability increased by 15 percent. One in three deals happens with uh, upsell. And also, we generated an additional product, which ranks number four in Russia, number seven in Russian Federation. Uh, it's selling new developments, so properties and new developments. First, we reached out to banks. We started selling mortgages for them. And now we help selling real estate new development properties. Now, let's discuss um, our next idea. Next idea was, uh, well, what if you sell not only at the moment of the first sale, but what if you sell in three to 12 months after the person buys a property or a car or something else? So we created an engine that analyzes data about clients. Also, it adds the data that we retrieve from external sources. So this engine analyzes the data about clients and uh, predicts what the user may need in three to 12 months with quite high accuracy. Or uh, maybe at some point the user will be willing to move turnkey, move uh, option, um, relocation service or something like that, or design or furniture. It also increased LTV. It's too early to talk about results. This is why I'm not showing results, because we recently launched it. But I think in three or four months, we will have some numbers to show. But we truly believe in this hypothesis. It's supposed to fly, I think. 
Next, we have a hypothesis. As I said, our clients are large enterprises, banks, insurance companies, and we thought, why don't why don't we sell our product um, as a microservice, not a full product, but a microservice? For instance, in our service, in our SaaS solution, we have an online um, account, sending requests, some analytics, payments part, and since. Since our CTO is a smart man who is here in this room, yeah, Max, it's about you. Uh, and he told us right away that we should uh, build a microservice architecture. Uh, now our system enables us to do this, so we can sell not only a holistic product in full, but also we can sell bits and pieces like tiny services. This way we expanded the funnel, and now uh, even a small B2B client can get a specific piece of uh, services that we can sell, and it solves his pain point. All right, that's actually all that I have. I, uh, I'm, even fit in, I'm, I'm okay with timing even. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear friends, now we have a little bit of time. Let me ask the audience. Amazing speaker here. Are there any questions? Yeah, yes, we have a question, and it's great. Just please wait for a moment. Let us wait for the microphone. It's the right from the stage is the right part and the fifth row. Please pass the microphone. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. My name is Konstantin. Thank you for your presentation. My question is the following. How do you how do you teach your team uh, to think in hypotheses, to formulate hypotheses right in a way that it brings not just local optimization, but in the way that their hypothesis would contribute to the large business, to your portfolio? Or how do you, how do you approach it? Konstantin, um, I got your question. As I said, uh, it's um, the major point of growth hacking. You must have a team that's ready to that. These people must be able to um, be adapted to this. It's the most important thing indeed. I'm actually quite lucky. My key competency is to gather strong people around me and the team well, um, first I created the first circle of managers around me. Um, they share my ideas and they share my values. When I interview people, so in case when I interview myself, not always, but, but sometimes, I hear that colleagues uh, are asking the same questions and they are promoting the same values, just like the values that I promoted for them. I don't know. It's difficult to say. Um, it's difficult to give you uh, the points exactly, like one, you should do one, two, three, and then it's going to work. What matters to me, uh, people must share my values, they must share my spirit, and they must really and truly believe what they do. Maybe you have a favorite question at an interview. How do you check that the person shares your values? Yeah, my first question is usually the following. I have read your CV, dear candidate, but what do you believe is the right thing that you should tell me about you. You can tell me anything about work, about your personal life, about how you fish in and how you uh, catch great big fishes. And the way candidate tells me about this, well, I can tell. In case of the candidate says, I make content and I'm great, I work all day, my fingers fill the keyboard and I don't even look at it. It's not interesting, most likely it's boring. Uh, but in case if he, this person says, I have a lot of friends, I go in for sports and I want to achieve great results, I want to find the company that will inspire me, I want to uh, really and truly share the values, I want to move towards success, I see that this person is more sincere and I like these people. Bravo, thank you. Uh, it's based on, based on your experience, right? You, want, you wanted to tap into this topic, right? Okay, time is limited, unfortunately. Maybe you will be able to catch Alexei later. Um, 
we have to move on. Anyway, Konstantin, thank you very much. And a round of applause, Alexei Mistrianka, uh, founder and CEO of IT company Timmy.